How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to continue our progress. And in this, we're gonna focus on the VPN v4 and the VPN v6 aspects of the configuration, where we're going to start on the router filters first, because they require a, not a ton of config, but it's rather repetitive at first. And we're gonna use as much um, configuration scalability as we can, like templates or peer groups and things like that. So we're not having to repeat a lot of up and down arrowing to configure everything. Then we're gonna configure the, the PE routers and the ASBRs respectively. And the route reflectors, obviously it's gonna be a route reflector design. Um, so that we just keep those things in mind when you're dealing with the configuration. Uh, we're gonna do that for both autonomous systems and get that all squared away. So let's go ahead and dive into the config. So we're gonna start on route reflector one. And route reflector one, configuration wise, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Router BGP one, I'm gonna turn BGP to uh, IP before unicast off. I'm gonna type in a neighbor, and it's gonna call it IBGP and a peer group. And the peer group is gonna have remote AS of one. The update source is gonna be loopback zero. And the, um, if I go underneath the address family VPNB4 and come in here and type in route reflector client. So now I'm gonna exit out of here and type in a neighbor of 1.0.0.1 peer group of IBGP. And then do the same thing for two and next thing do it for five and then do it for 11. Then address family VPN v4, hit the up arrow till I get to the very beginning and it's gonna be activate and then two will be activate and then five will be activate and then 11 will be activate. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So the config is very straightforward. Do show run section BGP and there we have it. So basically that's all the syntax that we need to have in play and we're good to go there. So to do the IPv6 variation of that would just be the same thing. We would take, um, let me exit out of here and address family VPNv6 and literally just copy and paste these commands back in for those. Policy commands not allow with IPv6 routing not enabled. IPv6 unicast routing. I happened to look right here and I saw that and I was like, oh, that's not good. So we'll basically router BGP1, address family VPNB6, and we'll copy and paste those. Whoops. We'll go grab this line of config again. And policy commands not allowed without an address family. So if we were to type in neighbor, I'm confused. Um, address family VPN v6 neighbor of 1.0.0.1 and we're going to activate it and oh I see what's happening um, to activate 5 activate and then 11 activate do show run section BGP um, and then underneath the we'll type in neighbor IBGP route reflector client and that'll apply to everything. Okay, so now we're good to go. So because we don't we don't need to have uh, IPv6 uh, connectivity because we can just run, uh, we're just trying to do uh, six VPE. So we just need to have the IPv4 peering up and running and that'll be sufficient for what we need to do. So the next thing to do is grab router one and go to global config, router BGP1, no BGP default IPv4, and then a simple neighbor of 1.0.0. I believe this guy is .20 or .10, 101. So we'll just grab that guy, um, 101, remote AS of one, update sources loopback zero, 
and then address family VPN before activate and VPN v6 activate oh um IPv6 unicast routing router BGP1 address family VPN v6 there so now and now we should have another peering for VPN v6 so well momentarily we have VPN v4 up do show BGP VPN v4 unicast neighbor um, show BGP VPN v4 unicast all neighbor and the VPN v6 unicast and VPN v4 unicast are both being sent so show run section BGP we simply have to, to grab these few lines of config and we're going to go over to CSR2. We just have to remember to turn the IPv6 unicast routing on globally and then copy and paste and do the same thing on 5. So let's go ahead and do that. IPv6 unicast routing. And when we go over to 11 and do this, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'll log into 11, which is going to be XR11. We'll type in router BGP1 and then we're going to type in neighbor of 1.0.0.101 remote AS of 1 update source is loopback <clears throat> update source is loopback 0 address family VPN v4 unicast and VPN v6 unicast but now we have to address family VPN v4 unicast the RD value oh, I'm sorry this is not a rot distinguisher I don't need to put it underneath the there's no VRF and then VPN v6. So uh, show config, pretty straightforward config. Not a whole lot going on here, but we should be able to commit this config and apply it, and that should work in our favor all day long. So that's basically what we're trying to uh, trying to do. And so we should start to be able to bring up peerings to everybody. So now if I go back to router or route reflector one, and I show BGP VPN before unicast all summary I have peerings to all of my PE router and my ASPRs for v4 and for v6 and this is really what you want to have happen so in the interest of time I'm not going over a lot of the the intr intrinsic details of what's actually happening because all that stuff was covered in the intra AS so that logic doesn't go away. That still needs to be applied here, configured, all that type of stuff still has to happen. So where I'm gonna start getting into the finer details is when we get flip over to the different options that we're gonna be going through. So let's go ahead and get AS2 configured, get him squared away, and then just validate that the peerings are up. We've already validated that there's reachability. We did that by doing ping tests and trace routes, and we could see a label switch path from the route reflector to either the ASBR or the provider edge router. And that's exactly what the kind of connectivity that we need. So on route reflector two, we're gonna go ahead and get this configured. Go to global config, router BGP two, and then address family VPN v4 unicast, and VPN v6 unicast. You'll also notice that during these configs, I'm not putting in IPv4 unicast at all. So I don't need that right now. When I do need that, I'll bring it up and lay it out, but right now we don't need that. So what I'm gonna go do is I wanna type in the, um, I have to go and specify a AF group, and I'm gonna, the address family I'm gonna specify is gonna be VPN, and it doesn't matter, um, actually it does matter V4, and then it's address family VPN V4 unicast. I'm just gonna type in route reflector client, and then I hit the up arrow, Swap that out for v6, and for v6, hit the up arrow, there we go. So now if we do a show config, that's my syntax so far. I have a VPN before address family group, and now I'm also gonna create a session group, session group called VPN v4. Actually, I could just do um, IBGP, and then underneath here I'll type in remote AS of two, update dash sources loopback 
zero. That's really all I need to worry about right now. So now I'll just type in neighbor of 2.0.0.6, use session group IBGP, address family VPNv4 unicast, use AF group VPNv4, and then I'll hit the up arrow to go to VPNv6, and hit the up arrow and then do one for six. So if we do a show config, that's my syntax. It's using as much configuration optimization as I can possibly throw at a particular use case. So I'm just gonna grab all this config right here, hit the up arrow half a dozen times until I get back to the IP address of the peer I wanna to connect to, and this time I already do eight, and then I copy paste. Hit the up arrow a couple more times, go back to 12, and then copy paste. And then 16, same thing, copy paste. And as you can see, when we commit this config, that after a moment or two, it'll come online. So that's all there really is to that. Now we're gonna go over to CSR6, go to global config, no or, um, router BGP2, no BGP default IPv4, and then neighbor of 2.0.0.20, remote AS of two, the update, update source is loopback zero, and then address family, um, actually let's do this real quick, uh, IPv6 unicast routing, router BGP2, address family VPNv4 unicast, and we're gonna go ahead and hit the up arrow to get to the activate, activate this adjacency, and do the same thing for V6. So momentarily we should have a peering pop up with X, um, with route reflector two, which we do. So do show BGP VPN V4 unicast all neighbor. And we have the capability of VPN V4 and VPN V6 being propagated. That's really important. You need to make sure that those capabilities are being exchanged. If you have like advertised but not received or you just have received but not advertised, unless it's bi-directional going back and forth between the route reflector and the route reflector client, then you won't actually be able to receive the updates appropriately that you need. So we'll validate that on the XR boxes as well, but I just wanna make sure that that makes, all, that makes sense to you. So now what I get to go do is do show run section BGP, and I'm gonna grab this config right here. I'm gonna jump over to CSR8. I'm gonna turn IPv6 unicast routing on and then copy and paste. And so momentarily we should have appearing with route reflector two when all that config looks good. So I'm gonna go back to XR12, log into him, go to global config, router BGP2, and then neighbor of 2.0.0.20, remote AS of two, update source is loopback zero, then uh, address family VPN v4 unicast and VPN v6 unicast. Then the neighbor again, address family VPN v4 unicast and v6 unicast. And then a show config. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, just like that. Commit. And then same thing on 16. Copy, paste, get all that squared away, and commit. Then we just have to go back here to eight and figure out why he hasn't peered. So do show IP interface brief, do show route, and do show IP route. Okay, so we have a problem here on eight. Um, do show run section ISIS. Um, Router ISIS one, net of 49.8.00, metric dash style wide, IS dash type is level two only. And then we're gonna type in MPLS LDP auto config. And then interface range gig one through two, loopback zero, IP router ISIS one. Assuming that I've done everything else correctly, we should form peerings with 14 and 15 respectively. I didn't validate that before. 
and that's why doing your IGP LDP ver validation first is a good idea. So there's our LDP adjacencies, and then which means that I have IP routing capability in play, and then now there's our BGP peering. So now let's go back to 16, which we know has appeared. We're going to do a show BGP VPN before unicast neighbors. And as you can see in the capabilities exchange, which is right here, V4 and V6 unicast advertised and received. Again, very, very important that you have that line up. If you don't, that can be a bad day. So as we as far as we are concerned right now, we have all of the connectivity in play that we need in order to get everything operational. The next stage in our process is to focus on the PE routers, get the VRFs configured. Once the VRFs are configured, apply them to the interfaces and then do the BGP peerings down to the customers and then propagate a route. So right now we have one customer. That's all we're gonna be focusing on and getting it up and running. So um, that's where we're at. The other routers, um, as we bring on, whoops, as we bring more customers online and we scale this out a little bit, we'll add more and you'll see the flexibility as we get further along. So that's pretty much it for this video. We validated everything. Actually, well, before I do that real quick, let's just take a look at two and do a show BGP VPN V4 unicast summary. We have four peerings up for V4 and we have four peerings up for V6, which is what we want to see. So now we're in good shape because we just validated it. So if there was a problem where there was, you know, anything other than a zero prefixes received, then I would say we have a problem and we need to look into it. I was watching CSR8 for a while, waiting for it to give me a blue diamond or a blue triangle with an exclamation point in it, meaning that there was new console information available and I didn't see that. I kept looking for it. I never saw it, that's why I had to go back to it and enable ISIS. But with that being said, it's an easy troubleshooting scenario. What's not, what is needed in order to make this work and what's not in the configuration. Right now it's just a, a lack of configuration. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next video.